Hey there. It's a bright and sunny day. It's hard to believe that a fucking hurricane just hit here. We Floridians, we sure are tough. I bet you're wondering why I'm climbing up here. Well, that's because I can't afford the money to build the set that would fit the theme of the topic I'm trying to discuss. But dear God, I'm trying. Anyways, roll the title card. Curiosity killed the cat is a very common proverb. We often hear this from several people growing up. Geo, don't look at what the neighbors are doing with their dog. Geo, you shouldn't look up food facts, they'll just scare you away from your favorite snacks. Geo, leave that body in the distance in the shady woods alone. They're probably fine and not dead and have been dead for weeks and weeks being consumed by the maggots and vultures. You see, as humans, we have a certain attraction to the unknown and overcoming obstacles. There's always some sort of reward, even if it isn't a physical one. Just finding the answer can be good enough. Now you're probably wondering why I'm bringing all this up, right? Well, I decided to go back and play a game flooded with these types of themes and elements. It's a game you might know as Tower Climb. And honestly, where do I begin? I did a video on Tower Climb a while back in, I don't know, sometime last year. I went through why I think the game is awesome, but honestly I didn't feel like I did the game any justice without giving it a proper Where Do I Begin review that it so rightfully deserves. So I'm just gonna go ahead and retcon that last video and start fresh. Now let's kick things off on explaining just what the hell Tower Climb is. Tower Climb was created by brothers DavioWare and Quasi, and it's a procedurally generated roguelike torture simulator. Just kidding. Although it can sometimes feel that way. The game being procedural means that basically every run will not feel or look the same as the assets are rearranged with each run played keeping the game from being stale. This is becoming a common trend in video games and I think it shines well in smaller roguelike games and other huge projects. As the game's name implies, most of its core gameplay is climbing, jumping, running, and climbing some more. And even more climbing. It might look simple on the surface, but no. This game is complex, brutal, and it has tons of nuance that you figure out the more you play and get a hand of the controls and text. This is a puzzle solving game, and I don't mean simple laid out puzzles with switches and whatnot, I'm talking about the environment around you being a puzzle itself. The goal of the game is to get to the door on the top of each floor without dying, and I'm just gonna warn you right now, everything here is trying to kill you, even gravity itself. I'm not used to a lot of platform based games having fall damage, so this is something to look out for. Just like Dark Souls, death is prominent and you should learn to accept it, and use it as motivation to keep going because you will die. Over, and over, and over again. And as I said earlier, that it was a roguelite, that means that you have to start all the way from the beginning of the first floor. I think the game tries to teach you to be more patient and to really value the life you have. It's a reflection of our own selves in a way. We as humans are so fragile, yet so strong-willed. So major props to these amazing devs for really bringing that feeling of humanity to life. While we're on the topic of the devs, 
They're actually pretty chill guys. Quasi really loves watching streamers play the game and often chats with them. So if you ever have any questions, they'll probably be there to give you the answers you're looking for. I can't tell you how much I love devs that have fun discussing their own creations with their fan base, one on one. It's like a win-win for everyone. Now enough of my praise, let's get back to the climb. Now you might be asking, does this game have a narrative? Is there a reason to get to the top? What's my driving force for this strenuous task? What's the goal? Now it's a little hard to answer, but yes, this game does have a narrative. It's just more sprinkled around the levels and small groups of NPCs that you can meet. To simplify things, the towers are guarded by beings that are way more ascended than the human species. What purpose do they serve? That's for you to find out. Yeah, it's vague, I know, but let's get down to the tower. The thing you're climbing is huge. Divided by 13 sections, getting to the top is a long process your first time through. It's a feat that's rewarding and worthwhile, so let's get started. To climb is to live. The first zone is pretty simple and the area is a little closer to earth, I think. Grass grows from the bottom, although the weather is sporadic and lightning strikes so there's a chance of dying if you try to wuss out and escape from the sides. This is where you learn what the game wants you to do. You get a tutorial in the beginning, yeah, but the first level lays it all out for you and then you learn from trial, error, and experience. So welcome to the ground zone. This place is probably warmer than it looks, with small pits of lava spread around. This place is where the dogs and rats roam wild. The dogs, as cute as they look, they're pretty massive and usually stick together. You better hope one doesn't hop on you out of excitement, because you will turn into a human chew toy. You shouldn't really run into any problems with them, but the rats? Oh god, the rats. These freaks like to go out of their way to get you. It's pretty annoying having a rat fall on you with no warning at all, so please stay cautious on these lower planes. They're no joke. When you start climbing, it is essential to save your jump potions early as they're an important tool as you climb higher. There are several ways to solve getting up the tower. Item jumping, which is an essential game mechanic, can give you an extra boost when you don't want to use your potions. It's a simple aim down and release the item you're currently holding. Get that down packed first. It will save you in moments when you are stranded and out of cash. A good tip is that you can also salvage individual spikes, although getting too close to the blast zone can leave you with a spike in your head. Ouch. After you get yourself through that zone, you'll soon reach the hatchery. Light is dim in this zone. The music is heavily eerie and ambient. Not too much is different here. It's a change of scenery with less blocks and a couple new monsters to ruin your journey. We got small worms that burst through the ground and try to get you and flying beetles that are hungry for blood. This is actually my least favorite zone, as I really dislike the beetles and the general feel of this environment. The next zone proves to be worthwhile though. The conservatory is a mix of ground floor and the hatchery. The floor is filled with roots and generally has a plant feel to it, all the way down to its enemies. There's a lot more scaling and timing that goes into this due to smart choice of adding seed pods, these enemies that slow you down and make you go at their pace. They shoot spores that I assume are toxic? I don't know, they kill you just like everything else in this game. I don't know what it is about this zone, but it does a good job of making you really work for it. I used to get stuck here often because I kept trying to rush through it. It's kind of like a turning point for your character. You start to see more routes to take, you start to really pay attention to the details around you. So I guess this is my favorite zone in that sense. If you manage to fly by this zone, the next zone is its own hell. Literally. Welcome to heart. This zone will make your body sweat and your legs shake. Remember that old game, The Floor is Lava? Well that got turned into an actual zone here. The heat is excruciating and you get the chance of having a really hot version of the place. Lava is leaking from the blocks and is erupting and splashing around you can really feel it with the heat wave effects. To make matters worse, you have bats flying around. You see our mascot Ken is a bat, and he's rad, but these bats? Fuck these bats. They like to grab people and try to drop them near lava pits. Make sure you have a weapon to kill these bastards. We use the boomerang. It's always got your back. Moving on. Two more zones to go. Woo! This place is pretty much night and day compared to heart. Here you get thrown into the ruins, a quiet, 
empty and cold place. This zone is beautiful and the music is perfect. It gives you that sense of loneliness while also capturing how captivating it is. You made it past where no human has gone before. Not many can say they've gotten this far, but you can. This place is pretty straightforward. Don't slip and let the gust of wind carry you to your goal. This place is awesome. Last zone, not so much. You've reached ascension. This place is so dangerous you have to take balloons up to avoid touching the poisonous floor. Not too much to say about this one actually. Just keep on your toes. You don't want to die and start over again, do you? Trust me. If you get through this, you get to the end. And the ending, I'll let you experience that on your own. Now with all those stressful zones, you're not always lucky to get a regular stage. Sometimes hazard will take place as slowly rising lava, a boss battle, or even the gold door locking while gas is pouring down, forcing you to go back to almost the bottom. What kind of shit is that? But I guess I can say those are more or less the memorable moments. Just making it out of it alive is so satisfying and it feels genuinely earned for skill and adaptation from in the moment thinking. And you can do all of this with your friends, as I did. The game has couch local co-op that can support as many controllers as you can plug in. Isn't that awesome? That seriously sold me on getting this game last year. The amount of stories and experience shared with friends could be turned into a light novel. This game is a memorable title and worth every cent. With such captivating moments filled with hope and despair, smart level design, excellent OST and art to boost, and co-op. I cannot recommend this game more. They even have a chapter 2 that is bonkers and goes all out, making chapter 1 look like child's play. This is a game made with love and is not one to miss out on. I'll see you next time for a Halloween episode on Deadhead Fred.